What a month it has been thus far. We've had multiple new MMO announcements, several of which look absolutely freaking incredible. Massive Blue Protocol overhauls are in the works. MMO delays. I hope you take a moment here to go get a snack, maybe a soda, because you're gonna need something to munch on over the course of the next 10 minutes. But before that, I wanna let you all know that I have a second channel, Sticks, that I post on every single day. This is dedicated to MMOs, gotcha games, general gaming, covering the best and the worst the industry does. Yeah, all that juicy drama. Consider coming on over and joining me there. Also, let me take a moment here to give a quick thank you to every one of our patrons. All your guys' support is invaluable and I cannot express in words how much it means to me. Finally, if you haven't already, follow us over on Twitch. We stream there every single weekend. Now, let's go ahead here and jump into this week's weekly bite of MMORPG news. I will preface this entire thing by stating I have covered a few of these topics in dedicated videos, and I urge you to go ahead, go down into the pinned comment below, and click any of them that interest you. Project XT is a brand new upcoming Unreal Engine 5 PC MMORPG. This is not a mobile game. This has no cross-platform functionality with mobile devices. This is developed as a full PC MMO with exclusive PC access, something that is becoming rarer and rarer these days. Project XT features a full action combat system with a variety of different characters or classes. I'm not entirely certain. It might be something that more closely resembles Dungeon Fighter Online or Soul Worker, with pre-designed characters that function as unique classes but offer a degree of customization options. Very little is known about the game currently, but I did compile some information and do a dedicated video on it yesterday if you're curious and want to learn more. Wayfinder is a pretty good looking upcoming MMO that had an early access release scheduled for May 2023 and a beta test slated for April. Midway through April, the dev team made a press release stating both instances of releases were delayed, with the beta test pushed back into May when the early access was supposed to release. On May 10th, the studio ran into a number of issues that resulted in the delay of their global beta, with the new date now confirmed for May 24th. Hopefully these two additional weeks give the studio the time that they need to remedy the issues currently running rampant as delays only have a negative effect on player perception. I understand the necessity for delays, but no gamer wants to have a release pushed back repeatedly. Every delay is more lost interest. Mrs. Sticks actually covered her impressions of Wayfinder over a period of many, many hours for those of you interested in seeing the kind of game it is. Bellator's is an MMO that I've covered once before. At the time, they had no gameplay, no official artwork, no real direction, until last week when they decided to drop a small environmental teaser and finally launch their official website in English. The website elaborated on quite a bit, strategic use of cover like what you'd find in third-person shooters, realistic PvP and realm vs. realm battles, massive battles against potentially procedurally generated dynamically spawned events and world bosses, all while showing on their website specifically gameplay of each feature. Bellator's looks pretty damn good, like a, a Western-inspired Asian MMO that could actually replace New World. I did a video on this last week if you're interested in additional details and footage. Genfinad is a brand new indie MMO with a $20,000 budget. Yeah. You heard that correctly. Not not $20 million, not $2 million, not even $200,000, $20,000, which is launching on June 15th onto Steam. Genfinad is a nostalgic browser-based MMORPG that takes a lot of inspiration from old-school MMOs. I know we've all heard that before. It's actually the most common statement indie studios make in an attempt to garner as much attention from nostalgic players as they can. The game is going to have a free tier and an optional monthly fee for content updates. I'm not entirely sure what that means with regards to accessibility of future content, but I guess time will tell. Regardless, you can test it out for free, so worst case scenario, you just waste a bit of time. NetEase no longer seem interested in releasing Justice Online, a PC MMORPG to the Western market. On the contrary, they're more focused on releasing Justice Online Mobile, their brand new mobile spin-off, because it'll make more money. There's really no contesting that. 
And while I don't list exclusively mobile titles in these videos, I need to today because of NetEase's confirmation that Justice Online Mobile will feature the world's first AI-generated NPCs with 100% AI-generated personalities that continue to evolve over time. You can respond to NPCs and quests however you like, and these NPCs will react to you in real time, thanks to the AI personality system being implemented. If this works out, you can expect the system to expand into other MMOs on every platform to dynamically generate worlds populated with evolving life. Crazy. I covered this in a previous video in much further detail if you're interested. Alicia is an MMO that I've covered a few times. It's a VR MMO, something that I, I'm honestly not familiar with, as I don't own any type of VR headset. Alicia is one of the few MMOs currently in active development for the VR platform that has seen repeated delays since its inception, the most recent of which happened over the last couple days ahead of its beta, which was supposed to roll out this weekend. The studio posted an apology via Twitter, confirming the beta will be delayed, but opted to not provide any new date, meaning the beta is delayed indefinitely, unfortunately for the few people interested in trying it out. Chrono Odyssey is an MMO that I covered years ago when there was no information outside of their pre-rendered cinematic. After all this time waiting, the studio and Pixel, who have since launched Grand Saga to a lot of success in Korea, launched their official website accompanied by a gameplay trailer. This trailer has taken the internet by storm, garnering millions of views across several large channels, making it arguably one of the most anticipated MMOs in the immediate horizon. Chrono Odyssey is a gorgeous action MMO allowing players to not only move through time, but also take advantage of it in battle and likely throughout the story. I covered in much more detail the trailer and features last week if you're curious. I've been playing a lot of Dragonflight, honestly it's a much better expansion than Battle for Azeroth and makes Shadowlands look like it was written by edgy emo teenagers. And while I've just recently stepped foot into 10.1's content, 10.1.5 Fractures in Time is right around the corner and Blizz is already teasing all of the content being introduced with it, including but not limited to the new augmentation evoker spec, mega dungeons, multiplayer time rifts, the option to be a warlock for additional races. Blizz is killing it with Dragonflight so far, and I'm more than happy to continue supporting WoW so long as they keep this quality up. NCSoft has confirmed via their first quarter 2023 financial report that not only have they seen revenue for mobile and PC games hit the lowest point in over a year, but also that Throne and Liberty is no longer launching in the first half of 2023. On the contrary, it is now confirmed to be delayed, pushed back to some point in the second half of 2023. This was honestly expected, as we haven't heard anything really all year pertaining to its release, and if I'm being honest, doesn't really seem entirely likely that it'll even launch in 2023 at this rate. I'm still eagerly anticipating trying it out, but it just seems to continue to slip further out of reach. And finally, Bandai Namco and the Blue Protocol team made quite the large announcement as part of their 6.3 deep dive, clearing up a lot of issues that players had with the game, drop rates, aggro generation, group content. This is probably one of the largest streams that they've ever done, and they made a note to address as many issues as they could, promising to tweak and alter numbers to make the game a much more smoother experience. I think this is a great step in the right direction and can't wait to try the changes out when it launches in Japan in the next couple months, given I played the beta test for well over 30 hours. I went over all of the alterations in an almost 20 minute video if you want more info on them. And that's it, that is all the MMO news that matter to me today. If you think I missed something, please let me know in the comments below and I'll make sure to take a look. Until then, I got you covered with two different videos you definitely need to check out. One featuring every single MMORPG launching this month, the other featuring every single gacha game launching this month. You won't regret wasting a few more minutes of your time, trust me.